this here is the 720 feed. So this is the back camera. This could act almost as a supplementary camera to my current GoPro rigs. On the screen at the very bottom, really quickly, you're gonna see that it's got a dual picture in picture. AZ Dome GS65H dual lens. If there was anybody in here, in the back, there's no way you'd be able to identify them. Power source is detected. This camera will start recording automatically. So this is your HDMI port. If you're in an accident or anything is about to happen, you have the ability to turn the entire camera all the way around so you can almost record yourself at 1080p resolution. Please make sure that you do investigate your local laws to make sure that if you do put this on, you don't get in trouble and get a ticket. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing for the Dashcam GS65H. This is an AZ Dome dual lens Dashcam hidden installation. I don't know what hidden installation is because I'm going to be displaying it to you. But either way, it can record on the front and it records the passengers all at the same time. We're going to get into this right now and we're going to go through a couple of details. And then I'm going to go and show you guys some footage. So let's get into the unboxing right now. This is your camera, some phone packaging, black box with accessories. So we've got a, a um, digital video recorder suction cup. We also have a, a quite lengthy USB to, I believe, micro USB connecting cord. So this powers your camera. We also have Yet another USB to micro USB. We have the cigarette lighter input with a dual USB. And, and you've got your mounting hardware, which includes some sort of a plastic scraper and a couple of double adhesive cable management clips. And there's four of them. Here's our manual. And finally, let's get into the camera itself. So here it is. It looks very much like the cameras that the police wear. This camera is under $100 US. I think this one is about 80 bucks right now. Came out in uh, April, 2017. Protective lens cover. So let's take this guy off. And let's take this gal off on the back. This one here does rotate down and up. A few things you may want to consider before you stick a camera in here and start recording your passenger if you're doing car sharing service is look in and investigate and research some of the laws of your province, state, country to see if you're even allowed to do it. Now, some provinces and countries will allow you to record passengers, video, but not audio. Others will allow you to record audio conversation, but not video. Some uh, will determine where you're going to put the camera uh, on your windshields as not to obstruct and uh, any views and to make sure that everything is safe. So uh, please make sure that you do investigate your local laws to make sure that if you do put this on, you don't get in trouble and get a ticket. You're going to notice that there are infrared lights, LED lights right around the, the lens. The front lens does not have infrared lights, but it does see in the dark. So we're going to be testing the footage and uh, here it is. All right, so what you are seeing now is front facing, right here, this is front facing footage from the AZ Dome camera. It is a somewhat gloomy day, overcast, absolutely no sun. You're hearing me from the native speaker of the camera itself. This here is the 720 feed. So this is the back camera with the four uh, infrared LEDs. I can adjust this up and down as you can see with the swivel or I can adjust the camera on its own if the passengers don't want to be recorded. Right now I can only see pretty much myself and it cuts off my head because the camera is really low on the windshield 
but if I wanted to bring it up, I can. Uh, I'm gonna show you right now where you're we're kind of in traffic. I can see some cars here But you probably want to lift it up a little higher. So now we are quite high on the windshield and You can see a little more of the back space. Is this enough if you are doing right sharing? Most likely during the daytime. Yes at night probably not because the infrared LEDs on this particular camera are just not good they pretty much only light up the top portion of your face within two feet the infrared 720p lens is pointing at me so if there was anybody in here in the back there's no way you'd be able to identify them as you can see if I move the camera side to side it only points almost a spotlight like a flashlight on where the lens is so definitely not a good use of this camera in the dark the front however let me just switch it's a very smooth picture now the only thing that you're gonna note is that the screen on the camera is a uh, 4x3 versus an HD version screen it stretches you out but when you import this on your machine and you open up the files the MOV files it will appear natural i will also use this camera to record another unboxing review just to see if this could act almost as a supplementary camera to my current gopro rigs in case i ever forget one or my battery runs low i'm also going to leave the native microphone recording so you can see if there is a lot of wind noise or not this is not a luxury vehicle that i'm in Currently I'm in a Ford SUV, so this is a pretty average car I would say. Uh, so it would give us a great sense of how loud the wind noise is when I'm traveling about 100 to 120 kilometers an hour, which is about uh, 70 miles an hour. Just so you know, I'm running the cameras off the battery itself with no cables attached. Now I rotated the camera around and now you'll be looking at 720p footage on the highway and 1080p footage right here. It does come with a suction cup so let's take this off and see how this works. Alright so the mount on top it swivels back and forth quite easily. There's a notch right there which we're going to slide in to the camera over here so i can tell that this is a really nice and convenient little mount unlike some of the gopro ones that i have the really cool feature is if you do mount it you have the ability to turn the entire camera all the way around so if you want to for example do what i'm doing of course i'm using the gopro here but if you wanted to you can almost record yourself at 1080p resolution the aperture for the front camera is 1.8 and the aperture for the back camera is 2.6. If you are recording with a twin channel, meaning you are recording both the front and the back lens simultaneously, the resolution is 1440 by 1080 on the front and 1280 by 720 on the back. If you are, however, only recording with the front, then you are going to get the FHD resolution at 1920 by 1080. The video codec is H.264 and it saves as MOV files. It's too bad that it's not MP4s, but it is what it is. So let's see how it mounts right now. So 
So here's the mount and yes, you do see snow. So we do this and I guess you turn here and then this locks it in place and then there it is. And then you can rotate. This is really nice and convenient if you wanted to, for example, record some road rage or perhaps you have a police person which pulls you over. So that way you can really quickly and easily turn it to their way and it would start recording the footage. Now this is not a touchscreen interface, so that's gonna be a little problematic. Your SD card goes right in here, and then your power is right here. It's plastic assembly. It doesn't look like a camera, which is kind of neat. I did uh, sense that in extremely hot weather conditions, the lens does tend to get blurry. We won't be able to do it because it's kind of cold right now here in Canada. But let's turn this on and see how it works. I really like this mount though. There are four buttons. There is an M button. There is an arrow up button. There is an OK button and there is an arrow down button. So we're going to go into the menu. Now this is an unboxing and overview of this camera. This is not a full review. If you want a full review, come back to this channel another time. So please make sure that you do share and like if you like this video. So the thing about dash cams, they turn on immediately as soon as they detect the power source. So if you do have the ability to feed your power and hit it in behind any of your dashboard, I would recommend you do so. Otherwise, you're gonna have plenty of cables sticking out and it just looks ugly when you do that. So perhaps seek out a professional electronics or a stereo installer so they can hook this up if you like this. So this side here has the TV out so you can connect this to your TV, which is kind of good. So these are the old school, uh, I believe this is an auxiliary cable. So you plug this in with the, the, the white, red, and uh, yellow. And then you can connect this to your RGB out. So this is your HDMI port. And then your USB charger is right in here. So let's uh, plug in the cable and see if all these are micro USB. So the first shorter cable, it definitely is a micro USB. And then the much longer cable, I'm pretty sure it should be. It is also a micro USB. So we're not gonna connect this to the cigarette port, but we are gonna connect this to a external power bank. So we're plugging it in, and then we should get so some, okay, so there we go. So the AZ mode turns on, it's got a picture in picture. On the screen at the very bottom, really quickly, you're gonna see that it's got a dual picture in picture. At the very top, it shows you the resolution, 1080p and 720p, so perhaps I was wrong. Uh, at the very bottom, it's showing you the date and the time that it's recording. Your power on and off button is right here, and you have the two little lights, which are green and red. One thing to note, this camera does have a lithium ion batteries. Now the thing with lithium ion batteries is that they are not as good when it comes to hot weather because they're gonna discharge basically. So it's not a very reliable thing to have lithium batteries on devices that you're trying to rely on when they're recording. Right now, this camera is connected to an external power bank and the camera is charging. It will take about 120 minutes or two hours to fully charge it. You can see that little red light. Well, that indicates that it's actually charging. Once it's fully charged, you no longer have to rely on the connected power. However, it's quite recommended that you always have this plugged in and rerouted in your car wiring. Some of the notable features on this is that once a power source is detected, this camera will start recording automatically. There is a loop recording feature, which means that once it gets to the end of the memory storage on the card itself, it's going to start overriding it on its own. Now, if something were to happen, if you're in an accident or anything is about to happen, there is this M key right here that you press and that's going to memorize or almost highlight that section in the video and to make sure that if it does loop, it's not going to overwrite that section. There's an auto power off function in here as well. I'm just reading off the manual. It says three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes when stop recording and no operation is being detected. Uh, you can set the time to turn off automatically after three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes as well. 
Are there better cameras out there? Definitely. But for under 80 bucks and as a backup to your vlogging setup or a selfie setup, I highly recommend this particular camera during the daytime. If you haven't already, do subscribe. And if you like this video, press the like button. And if you love this video, punch the like button. And I will see you on the next video. Marcin, out.